the opportunity to witness things that almost nobody in the world has ever seen before is it's a big discovery, right? So guys, for every one of you who lives in the US, especially the West Coast, and especially in Oregon, I have a volcano for you that is now ready to erupt. I have reported about it just a few weeks ago when I actually was in Oregon, exactly at the spot where the volcano is, just offshore of Oregon, and I was standing on the beach and basically the volcano was behind me. I'll blend in these pictures while I was there. Um, actual sea mount is showing signs of approaching an eruption as magma is building up. And scientists said early this year and also late last year that this volcano will erupt this year. But it seems it's erupting sooner than we expected. It could erupt actually right now. So actual sea mount is an underwater volcano just off the Pacific Northwest coast. It could erupt soon for the first time in a decade. And scientists at the University of Washington have detected a very, very sharp, intense increase in small undersea earthquakes and also seafloor inflation. Land is rising. And you know what that means. Magma is trying to come to the surface. So this is a sign of magma buildup within the volcano. And despite this activity, experts say there is no threat to coastal communities because, yeah, if you have that volcano right along the coast, of course you're worried about a tsunami because that's what underwater volcanoes can do. So this volcano remains under constant observation right now and they're using one of the world's most advanced ocean monitoring systems and what you see on this picture behind me these bubbles these are basically microbes and their waste material that stream from this vent that axel seamount has there they call it snowblower and that happened three months after its last eruption in 2011. So latest observations by the scientists' cable array that they have. That's an interesting, I'll, I'll get to it, I'll explain what that is, because that's really interesting. So it's from the University of Washington, and this cable array, their data, indicates that actual seamount could be approaching his eruptions, possibly within a few months to a year, they still say, but maybe earlier because it has increased now. In the late 1990s, actual seamount was under strict surveillance. It was the focus of one of the world's first long-term underwater volcano observatories. It's called the New Millennium Observatory that was established in the late 1990s. And today, actual for the Germans that are watching, I always want to say Axel. <laughs> it's just a joke. It's Axel. It's just like a funny German name. Let's say it that way. So today, Axel, Axel is continuously monitored through the Ocean Observatory's Initiatives Regional Cabled Array, which provides real-time data via a network of submarine cables that go from the volcano to the land. You see the picture here. So you see actual seamount and then you see basically how it goes to Pacific City. That's where I have been. I have videos of me standing on the beach there. I, I didn't see the cables are underground. So this system includes, that's very interesting, 20 seafloor instruments that are deployed around the volcano and they're collecting data on seismic activity, the seafloor deformation, the chemistry of the vents that are coming out, and of course, ocean conditions. And here is a super interesting fact about actual seamount. Do you know that there's real gold being formed at the bottom of the ocean? Yes, you hear me right. And here you see the rock sample that the researcher from the University of Washington holds in her hand. So the scientists have found high amounts of gold at 
actual seamount, the deep sea volcano. And it's one of the few places under the sea where gold is naturally concentrated in underwater metal deposits. And they have closely looked at these metal deposits and that rock that you see here that's a sample so here's what's happening hot fluids like hotter than boiling water rise up from deep inside the earth through cracks in the seafloor we see this come up bubbling like these fumaroles and as they cool down near the surface they release a mix of metals like zinc copper lead silver and yes gold don't go down there, it's not worth it. So in one huge sample from actual sea mound, they found gold levels as high as 6,700 parts per billion, which is way above normal for the ocean floor. So actual, it's quite a golden boy. So, but the gold doesn't just appear anywhere. It seems to build up when certain conditions are just right, like having cooler, slower moving water near the surface that helps the gold to settle along with silica, barite, and other minerals. So, of course, this is very, very interesting for the scientists because this discovery helps the scientists understand how some gold-rich mines on land may have originally formed underwater millions and millions of years ago. So our actual, our deep sea volcano is creating gold beneath the ocean waves. But let's get back to the cable array surveillance. So this is cables that go like 480 kilometers, that's like 300 miles from the offshore location of the volcano until they reach land. And the data from this cabled array shows the seafloor has inflated more than 20 centimeters, that's 7.9 inches, in the recent month only. So approximately twice the rate that they have observed prior to previous eruptions. That's why they say it's about to blow, including the 2015 event when it last erupted. It wasn't like this. So will we see a bigger one? That's the question. But also, in addition to that, at the same time, the scientists have observed a steep increase in the number of small earthquakes on the seafloor around the volcano. That's another indication. Pressure is building up. Something's accumulating underneath and it's making the rocks brittle and we're seeing these earthquakes. So the volcano is bulging. It indicates the magma wants to come to the surface and it's accumulating there. And the scientists are making it clear, we know how this ends. We've seen accumulation at actual before, and we know what's happening. A professor of oceanography at the University of Washington says we're now within a few months to a year of an eruption, rather closer. And the volcano is following its pattern of it's very well documented because it has erupted quite a few times, like a pattern of inflation and increased seismicity that has preceded past eruptions. It's like in Iceland, where we know now because there have been so many eruptions in the last one and a half years, we know what's happening before an eruption. So the buildup and the activity was similar in the months that, that led up to the 2015 eruption, but the land rise is way more right now. Actual seamount is not small, guys. You have to understand that. Actual seamount is a large caldera on the seafloor. And how is this caldera formed? Well, calderas form by a collapse of a magma chamber. That's how it was formed. And you see um, a, a picture here. And it's also right, basically, well, we're not surprised if we have tectonic movements, the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate in this area it creates volcanoes we're on the pacific ring of fire and we have the cascadia fault that could produce magnitude nine or higher earthquakes and if you look at the west coast there's lots of volcanoes so the researchers are saying hey there's no need for public concern 
They're saying most people would not even know that an eruption is occurring if they didn't have the infrastructure in place. So they don't think that there's anything, any caldera walls or any landslides or anything that could trigger a tsunami. Why do underwater eruptions like the ones of Akshal typically not cause tsunamis or major big earthquakes? Um, it's the thick layer of ocean, of weight above the volcano that helps suppress any explosive activity that might come from this volcano. And they say the magma that is underneath actual contains fewer gases than magmas that erupted on land. So that's why usually submarine volcanoes are less violent, but they can produce landslide, Marsili, or the Colombo volcano just off the coast of Santorini, its walls could collapse. This is a really big structure and could trigger devastating tsunamis. So this is located, most people know Cannon Beach, tourist destination, right? Um, it's west of Cannon Beach, um, submerged at a depth of roughly, and that is deep, 4,626 feet underwater. That's 1,410 meters underneath the ocean's surface. That's why they're saying that keeps somewhat the thing under control, but it sits directly on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, an underwater boundary where tectonic plates are diverging and new seafloor is actually created there. And within the ridge system, it is positioned between the Blanco Fracture Zone and the COP Offset. That's how it's called. And over the past 25 years, actual seamount has erupted three times in 1998, in 2011, and in 2015. And it's about to erupt, as it looks, in 2025. And since it is quite accessible, it's, it's a key location for studying submarine volcanic processes and also tectonic activity on mid-ocean bridges because they've got the surveillance instruments there. So this is very, very interesting. So the last eruption that happened on April 2015, it was detected through a series of small earthquakes on April 23rd that has signaled magma beneath the seafloor is accumulating, it's moving. And then they also were able to collect physical evidence of this eruption when they conducted a research um, expedition in a few months later in August of 2015. And they have used a remote control vehicle to combine it with seafloor mapping tools to really surveil this thing and they have identified fresh lava flows to the north of the summit caldera of actual seamount and some of these lava flows were thick and they showed signs of having collapsed inward while still partially molten so they might have created some craters that have collapsed inward and additional to this thin lava deposits and additional to that Thin lava deposits were found inside the northeastern part of the caldera and along the rim of the caldera. So I hope you found that interesting, a quick update about that guy. And uh, yeah, guys, like it, subscribe, and leave me a comment. What do you think about that underwater volcano? I think it's exciting. And do me a favor and watch the videos in the end screen because there's exciting stuff that I have produced and I hope you like it. And if you do become a subscriber, maybe even a monthly channel member to support the channel or just buy me some coffees at my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. Link is in the description. Everything you need to know is there. Thanks for your support, guys. Thanks for the supers. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for watching on a regular basis. And so I hope you have a great morning afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I know a lot of you start your morning with coffee and with silky. Thanks for that, guys. But also thanks for the ones that end their day with maybe something stronger and with silky. So see you very soon, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.